All right, calm down, calm down. You're not having a funny turn, and even though it might look like it, you're definitely not hallucinating. This is a real trailer for a real upcoming game called Atomic Heart. And as you can probably guess from these phenomenal visuals, it's creating quite the buzz in video game land. So what exactly is Atomic Heart, you might be wondering? Well, here's nine things you need to know about the game. Atomic Heart is an adventure first-person shooter. Think something along the lines of Bioshock, and it's set in an alternate universe version of the Soviet Union. Little to nothing is known about its mysterious development team, Mundfish, although its website shows that the company is based in a swanky loft office in central Moscow. There seems to be only one photo in existence that shows members of the team working on the game, and it can be found on their Instagram and Facebook pages. The picture shows three rather youthful developers planning out the game's story using a map and post-it notes. The resolution of the picture is too low to tell what's written on the post-its, but it is clear that they do have some very funky chairs. Oh, and that this chap here likes eating pens. I mean, look, he's nearly finished a whole one there, the greedy so-and-so. On the subject of Facebook, Mundfish's first social post for the game was on the 23rd of March 2017, showing us that the studio has been working on Atomic Heart for at least 14 months. The only other photo on Mundfish's Instagram account confirms that the game is being made in Unreal Engine 4. Now, before I get into the nitty-gritty of Atomic Heart, it's well worth pointing out that Mundfish have another game in the works that's called Soviet Lunar Park VR. The announcement trailer for this game came out on April the 10th, 2018, but it flew under most people's radars, so chances are you won't even know that this VR introduction to the world of Atomic Heart even existed. Soviet Lunar Park is actually a VR horror game, but it has a story mode that can be played in single player or co-op, and it includes a PvP arena for some brutal multiplayer mayhem. Now, as well as giving you an extra insight into the goings-on in Atomic Heart, which I'll cover later on in this video, this VR title also has some very unique gameplay concepts. According to the Steam page for the game, you can play a whack-a-mole game with your friends, although in this case Nazi hamsters will be taking the role of the moles, and if that's not enough weirdness for you, it also says you can win prizes by shooting hungry Soviet seagulls out of the sky with a slingshot. Bonkers. In fact, going by the end of the trailer, you can see that, along with all the horror elements, the developers have made sure that there's plenty of opportunities for light-hearted moments as well. Right, time to get into the world lore of Atomic Heart. As I mentioned before, the game is set in an alternate universe version of Soviet Russia, and it looks like the majority of the game, at least, will be set in a bizarre secret research complex called Facility Number 3826. Now, at the end of the most recent trailer for Atomic Heart, we are shown a map of this alternate Russia and the location of Facility 3826. It can be found to the west of Moscow, and the map marker for the complex says that it was named after Sechnov, who I'm guessing is Ivan Sechnov. Sechnov is the father of Russian physiology, whose main interests lay in neuroscience, and especially how activity in the brain is linked to electrical currents. Chances are this choice of name isn't random, because according to a post on the Atomic Heart website, the machines of 3826 are rising up and killing everything that isn't made out of nuts and bolts. Now, it is possible that these robots have been programmed to behave like this, but perhaps it's actually secret experiments on human brains that have allowed these robots to somehow become self-aware. Judging by all the warped visuals in the trailers, it's probably safe to say that at least some of the experiments in the facility are linked to neuroscience, but perhaps these trippy scenes are more than just simple hallucinations. 
If we slow down this shot from the Atomic Heart teaser trailer, for instance, we can see a fish swimming through this floating tube of water. Have the scientists in 3826 discovered a way to distort reality itself? Have they found a way for humans to control the elements with their minds, perhaps? For now, the answers to those questions remain a mystery. Oh, and it's not just robots you have to worry about, by the way. There's also zombies in these trailers as well, because it's a video game, so of course there are. There might be something else hidden underneath all these robotic horrors and fleshless freak shows, though. A short post on the Atomic Heart website explains that you can explore the world to find out more about a love story between two employees of the facility. Is this just going to be a simple case of reading notes or listening to voice recordings to find out a heartbreaking backstory? Or will this tale of two lovers turn out to be the catalyst that kicked off the events in 3826? That, my friends, is a question I currently don't have the answer to. So, what kind of work goes on in Facility 3826 then? Well, it turns out this complex is actually pretty large, because not only is it located underground, but it also has many buildings and objects on the surface as well. From the webpage of Soviet Lunar Park VR, we know that 3826 houses a showroom where guests are introduced to the latest machines and top-notch technologies and innovations. There's a storage room below that, full of a strange red liquid that probably plays a large part in the main game story. There's also an underground tunnel system, because of course there is, it's a secret underground base after all, and there's some kind of twisted theatre full of stabby robots. Over on the Mundfish Twitter account, there's a link to a now-deleted video titled Whale Lab Aquarium, which, unlucky Johnny, means there's a high chance of lots of whales appearing in the game. Oh, and as you can see in all this gameplay, there's of course plenty of robo-experiments going on inside and outside the facility itself. Now, if you're wondering who you're going to be playing as in Atomic Heart, wonder no more, as I can confirm you'll be playing as a special agent named P3, who has infiltrated 3826 to find out exactly what's gone wrong there. Nothing else is really known about P3, but you can see here that he wears distinctive leather gloves that have some kind of metal device or decoration on each of the middle fingers. Also of note is this watch, which, considering the lack of a UI in this gameplay, is probably your health meter. Oh, and just below the thumb there you can see a P3 insignia, because, I don't know, maybe P3 hates having his gloves stolen when he goes out to the swimming pool with his schoolmates or something. Shout out to this can of condensed milk, by the way, which I presume is P3's way of regenerating health. Mmm, milky. So if P3 is the protagonist, who is the antagonist? Well, it seems like there might be more than one, although details are still sketchy at best. On the Atomic Heart website, a short post cites experiments conducted by a Dr. Stockhausen as the cause for the dead rising from the grave. There's no indication as to whether we'll meet the Doctor though, just that we'll need to find clues to discover exactly why this all happened. Over on the Steam page for Soviet Lunar Park VR, we're told that the robots in the game are the work of a Dr. Pavlov, although again, we might not even meet this mad scientist. It might just be another case of battling his abominable creations while piecing together the backstory of the events which led up to the robot uprising. If you're wondering why you haven't seen many guns in this gameplay, it's because the combat system in Atomic Heart has an emphasis on close combat battles. You can see some sidestepping melee action here, for instance, which suggests that sometimes it might be better to avoid enemies altogether rather than just trying to fist punch something that's made out of steel. There are firearms in the main game, but the ammo for these is said to be tightly limited. Although going by this trailer clip, there seems to be some level of weapon customization in the game. 
Soviet Lunar Park VR, on the other hand, looks like it's all about the shooty bangs. Pretty sure you won't need to worry about ammo in this one, as the gameplay here shows the player character fighting waves of bad guys with a bunch of different guns. So, after hearing all about it, I bet you're dying to know exactly when you'll be able to play Atomic Heart. Well, sadly, the date is yet to be announced. All we know at the moment is that it's coming out soon on PC, PS4 and Xbox One. Soviet Lunar Park VR, on the other hand, is scheduled to come out on Steam sometime this month for HDC Vive and Oculus, but it's also due to come out on the PlayStation VR at an undisclosed date. And finally, yes the trailer looks amazing, and yes the enemy designs look spectacular, but let's not get our hopes up just yet. The Bioshocky vibes given off here remind me a lot of the hype surrounding We Happy Few when that trailer sprung up out of nowhere, and we all know how that one turned out, don't we? Okay, and that's pretty much all the info I could piece together about this incredible looking game. But what do you think about Atomic Heart? Are you excited for it, or maybe feeling cautious? Let us know in the comments below, and do like and subscribe to Eurogamer for more Atomic Heart coverage in the near future. Goodbye!